Hello everyone, Kent Bressler here. I want to welcome you to Kent's Kidney Stories. During our time together um, over these podcasts, I'd like to uh, discuss kidney disease. I'd like to tell you about my journey as a transplant patient, but also talk about dialysis, kidney donation, and just about anything else that might be of interest. Kent's Kidney Stories podcast endorsed and sponsored by kidneysolutions.org. Hello everyone, this is Kent Bressler and we're going to be doing some podcasting. I don't know where you're going to get the information, but you're going to hear it directly from Kidney Solutions. We're a not prof, not for profit organization that helps people find kidney donors, and we help them during the transplant process by being there prior to, to being transplanted, and then we follow them afterwards for sure to help them keep their kidney. What we're trying to do here today, and what we won't be trying to do, we are going to do. We're going to talk to a fellow that's uh, come to find out, joined our support group, so. After we pray, we're going to we're going to get started. And thank you for coming in and thank you for listening. Heavenly Father, we are only able to meet our issues with your guidance. As we navigate through our personal issues, please help us to know the importance of prayer and supplication. There are so many patients out there who are seeking a living donor transplant. They are all on their own journeys, but we ask that you favor them and provide. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. And it's been brought to my attention now, as of yesterday, and the day before, and the day before, and the day before, that there seems to be plenty of cases of flu, RSV, and yes, COVID still going around. It is the flu season, and cases have been acknowledged to be frequent throughout the country. More RSV in children reported, and COVID is still here. So my point in mentioning it is, have you had your shots? Are you up to date with your shots? It's never too late to get vaccinated. There's been a, a need in my, my organization for living kidney donors. And one of the things that makes kidney living kidney donors so difficult is finding them. I don't think it's a matter of whether or not an individual can or can't. It's whether they're given the opportunity. And so we always say in the business, if you don't ask, you're not going to be able to help out. You're not going to be able to donate. And the people that are working to donate to you, if you do, a person doesn't know about it, they can't pray for you. So it's very, very important. If you're thinking about being a kidney donor, I want you to give us a call at Kidney Solutions, 830-285-2140, and we will be more than happy to help you get all of your questions answered. And so today, today I would like to uh, introduce to you Greg Matthews. Greg came to me through our support group, and he's... Uh, quite an interesting fella. We're going to get his story in, but we're going to let you know right up front. This gentleman, and I mean gentleman, is looking for a kidney. He's looking for someone to step up and donate a kidney. That's an important thing to think about. And at Kidney Solutions, we have the answers for you, and all of our services are free. So, Greg, how are you? I'm I'm doing well. <laughs> I'm sitting here on my front porch in Florida, enjoying what's, what is a beautiful day. Um, it must be in 80 degrees. It's it's truly lovely. Thanks for having me on. Oh, listen, it's a, I've been a really intrigued by your whole story ever since you you know we started talking about it. Let, let the other people who are going to be listening to this over time to uh, realize that you also have had a, another transplant already. Can you explain that? Yes. Um, in 2014, I was diagnosed with a pulmonary disease called 
idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And it's a disease where your autoimmune system activates to destroy the alveola, the little air sacs in your lungs and making them very fibrous. It's, um, there's no treatment for it other than a lung transplant. Um, I received a lung transplant after a long search at Houston Methodist Hospital in Houston, Texas. Uh, that was in 2014. Um, the, uh, the reason I'm here today is that some of the drugs that I take to protect my kidney from rejection impact my kidneys and they've impacted to the point where now I'm in um, renal failure looking for a, a transplant. Out of respect, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of clear that statement up. You said your kidney, your lung, lung transplant is covered by immunosuppression. That's important. That's correct. And that's okay. I Not a problem. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but that want people to understand that he, this gentleman has had a, had a lung transplant. And uh, now from the medications that he's taken to keep it from rejecting his uh, kidneys are malfunctioning or actually now he's in renal failure. So how, how far into renal failure are you? What is your, do you know your numbers? <clears throat> I do. The, uh, the GFR is the measure of, uh, of kidney functions my physicians are using. And I'm told that 10 is when I, I, I must face dialysis. I've been as low as 12. And on my test last week, I was back at 16. So I'm, I was told I'm stabilizing somewhere in the 12 to 16 range which I think is uh, about as low as I can go without being on full dialysis. That's correct. In most most sites, if you will, not all of them that I know of, but the vast majority of them will transplant a kidney for you at 20 or below. They like to see it below 20. But right now, you you feel like you're stable. Are you Do you feel healthy? You feel good? You're not having any signs and symptoms of nausea, vomiting, all of that kind of stuff? No, I think the the symptom I have right now is I, I don't have a lot of energy. Um, um, and I have I do have a little bit of swelling in my ankles, but um, that beyond that, I'm 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 doing what I what I normally do, not quite as as much I as I was. I paint during the afternoon, and I still find time to paint. Um, so I think I'm living a pretty good life right now. So but Tell I'm me, just very, very tired. Yeah. And that's part of kidney disease. Even after you have a transplant, you know, and you've had it for a long period of time. One of the things is, is that you do have fatigue. You have it. It, it happens, but it's, it's a whole lot better than, you know, than the alternative, which is dialysis after transplant. So we don't want <clears throat> to belabor the point, but it's always nice to get you transplanted before you go on dialysis because dialysis beats you up there's no doubt about it plus the fact that since i'm immunocompromised the uh the chance of infection um is, is much much higher so absolutely yeah so when you even get into that what we're going to just get into today in 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 this short period of time is to make sure that everyone is realizing that you need a you need a kidney donor, and that's what we're working for. And how they can do that, how they can do that is they can call us at Kidney Solutions, 830-285-2140, and we have a donor coordinator that will work with them and um, will help them get through the transplant process. You know, whatever. Uh, right now, you're in Florida, and you're uh, registered at what hospital? Tampa General Hospital. Tampa General, okay. And there was some type Tampa. of caveat, some kind of, which I was having a little bit of uh, either misunderstanding or didn't understand it, that you have a time schedule where you have to uh, have a ha have a donor before what a period of time? Yes. Um, my listing at Tampa General is conditional. Um, and I asked them why, and they just said because of, medical complexity my um my my transplant back in 2014 had some complications i needed some heart surgery and some some other internal surgery and i think that 
I've, I've dealt with complications over the last nine years. So when they put me on the listing, they said, we'll, we'll list you for a lung, for a kidney transplant, excuse me. Mm -hmm. but, excuse me, a car went down the road, <laughs> a kidney transplant, but you're only listed for six months and it must be a living donor. Okay. So I have March 19th, 2023 as a date to have the uh, transplant completed, which means I need to find a donor very, very quickly. I've, well, I've checked with... No, go ahead. Yes. I'm sorry. No, I, 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 I only have... Um, I was an only child, but I've checked with my cousins and I'm his family as far as I can. And I don't have anyone in, with my blood type, type O, that's eligible to be a donor. So I'm, I'm re seeking out my friends. Okay. And that's, others. that's the importance. Have you registered at any other facilities? Are you anywhere in Florida or, or even considered going back to Methodist in, 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 uh, in uh, Houston? Um, no, I haven't. The, the reason is that my, my lung transplant care and the network of physicians I have relating to that care, um, I, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable leaving them to go to another location. Okay. Um, didn't that too long? Didn't that lung transplant occur in at Methodist? It did happen to Methodist. You're right. Have you? But all my care. Yeah. Have you? Have you called back to the transplant program and talked to them about the per, what's going on right now? And it's okay if you you um, haven't. It's a, your your prerogative, but that would be a recommendation. Yeah. Well, I did talk to. I still stay in touch with my old uh, physicians from Houston Methodist. It's it, it was a great place. Oh gosh, it and, is. Yes, uh, I haven't. I, I talked to Dr. Jotula maybe a a month or so ago, but I didn't mention this. Um, I can. I really think that I've got the wheels. I need to stick around. All my support group, my family, okay. are are in. So I'm I'm committed to, to staying here. But it's 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 a good it's a good idea. Okay, that, well then we'll we'll we won't drop it, but we'll you know maybe we could at least give them give it some consideration we, later on down the road. Because well, when you have a I when you have an ultimatum, you know an ultimatum, it's you know you got to you're we're going to work real hard, but you know, sometimes it's not easy to find a donor, but we're going to work real hard to do it. <clears throat> well. You know, I, I think if we look down, I'm hoping that I can keep my my health up, and maybe there be, maybe there'll be an extension of my March 19th date. I just don't. Now know. that's that's a way to think. That's a way to think. So, all right. I'm I'm doing everything I, I can to to stay healthy, um, enjoy life, enjoy my family, um, while I'm looking for my my donor. Well, your your GFR, your reg, the regulatory testing that that gets done for kidney function is stable and that's that's to your advantage i you know recommend that you just stay with it stay with your doctors but uh, again if anybody's interested um the course is open here please give us a call and we'll we'll get you all the information you need to sign up and we'll also work with you uh, uh you know getting flyers out and all those things that we usually do with kidney solutions so I can't, I can't thank you fellows enough for what you've done so far to help me. When I before I met you, I felt like I was carrying the weight of this whole problem on my shoulders. I couldn't sleep at night. I just checked my sleeping over the last week. I'm sleeping the whole night through now. <laughs> and it just, I just feel relieved of the of the the pressures on my soldiers shoulders. Thank you so much, really, for your your help. Oh. I can't. I can't express enough appreciation. Now you're um, giving me goosebumps because that's why I do this. Okay. Well, this is not only me. I'm talking about Jonathan and I'm talking about Shannon and I'm talking about Jim and all the people that you met on the support group and how important it is to have some mentors that are willing to step up and say, Hey, do this, do that. But they're going to give you good information, it, you know, information that they've lived. So yeah, Armand. I, I can name a, a hundred people that we that we work with. So, 
All right. So the best thing I think we can do is, again, alert people to the fact that you do need a donor. That simple. The, the whole point is if you listen to this and you're off somewhere in the country, uh, not in the world, in the country, and you want to talk about it, you get a hold of me at 830-285-2140, and we'll discuss all the options that are available to a potential donor. It would be preferred that that person be an O, uh, but I'll tell you what, if there's a paired exchange in this uh, situation, we're going to entertain that also. Anyway, you got to get a hold of us. We can't do anything without you out there. All right. Greg is, Greg's not begging. He's not doing anything other than doing what a normal person would faced with this situation. This is horrible, a horrible situation to be in. And there's, you know, over a hundred thousand people looking for a donor, but guess what? God sends them. We know that. And we're going to, we're going to pray heavily that, uh, that donor comes soon. You want to help? Give us a call. Okay, Greg, listen, there's a, there's an old saying amongst us kidney warriors. You never give up. If you give up, all is lost. But you've got hope now. You've got hope and you got friends. You got people that are going to work with you. Okay? Mm-hmm. To the end. But, but, but Ken, like I told you, when I went for my um, lung transplant, I was turned down by seven institutions before I found one that would finally give me a lung. And, uh, you and, know, you just got to keep on, keep on checking and having faith in people. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So I appreciate anyone uh, out there that uh, has an interest in this. Thank you. How long have you had your lung transplant? I had my lung transplant in um, April of 2014. April of 2014. That is a good one. Yeah. And they, you know what? There's a long, there's longevity in these. I know people yeah. that have been as, outwards of uh, 10, 15 years, right? But that's not Mm -hmm. what we look at. What we look at is the individual, you're healthy and you're viable and you really want to do this. And I think your family (laughs) wants you around too because of your vitality, your vim and vigor. So I don't believe there's anything that would keep you from finding one. And when we do, we'll rejoice. How's that sound? I'm ready for it. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Listen, folks, that's a short, a very short conversation with the gentleman, Greg Matthews, who lives in Florida. I have all the information, every bit of information you would need if you would consider donating a kidney to this gentleman. We want you to give us a call at 830 285 2140. If you mind, if you don't mind, if you please distribute this podcast to others so they can listen to it, that would be grateful because you never know when somebody's listening, they might be touched and ready to ready to sign up. And we do not have any fees at uh, Kidney Solutions. You will not be charged a nickel for this, not even a penny. And Greg's not going to be charged either. This is gratis. This is a 501C, and we're more than happy to help pro bono. Anyway, get a hold of me. I'm ready. Until the next time, keep breathing.